Yo, what's up guys, it's Grant here today, and recently the City of Beta has finally ended. Now today I actually want to talk about what I, my thoughts are on the game, what I thought of it, what was really good to me, what was disappointing to me, and what was bad. Generally, I really do love the Dissidia series, because I've had Dissidia and Dissidia Dua Destiny 012, and I really want to talk about the comparisons of the game, talk about how the game is. Now, just a brief heads up, I am scripting this video, but there are going to be times where I go off and just go off the top of my head on what I thought about the game. So, if you guys are ready, let's get into today's review. So the first thing I actually do want to talk about is what I enjoyed about the game. There is a lot of good that outweighs the bad of the game. Well, yes, there is a lot of eh, problems with it. This is a beta, and this is for Square Enix to kind of hear our complaints, so this is why you should make videos kind of talking about it, or at least just talk to them and submit problems and give proper feedback. So it's good. Each character feels funny and unique. There's no actual clone characters. There are characters that they each fall under a class, such as Tactician, Assassin, and Bruiser, which are pretty much tanks. So, the tank characters are like Cloud, um, anyone with a big sword, like Cloud, um, Sephiroth, Gargus, just about all of them. And then when we get to the Assassin characters, we got like Lightning, Squall, well, Squall falls more under Tactician, and then we have like the Magic type characters, which are like Terra, uh, Cloud of Darkness, and a couple more characters like Kefka. Generally, I do like that we are getting this sort of balancing of the system, and we're giving them an entry so, Now, one thing that I really did have an issue with was lack of characters, but then it makes sense. They're actually keeping the characters to per franchise. So we have Cloud, and we have Sephiroth for Final Fantasy VII. We have Jet, and we have Tidus for Final Fantasy X. We have... We only have one Final Fantasy XIII character, not one Final Fantasy XV character. But not a lot of characters are interesting, to be honest. Even though I would have liked to see Snow as a playable character. But generally, we have one villain and one hero per entry. Which is kind of makes sense because, again, this is talking about light versus darkness. And I guess they didn't want to put a lot of emphasis on it. The beta does give us a little bit of entry into the story. Which, again, when my full out review comes out, you guys will be seeing what my thoughts are on this series. So... Another thing that I generally did enjoy was that the game graphics look beautifully stunning. They are stunning as graphics. They look beautiful, and that's what makes the game so cold. Is that generally you would expect them, you know, to look basic at least for Square Enix standard. But Square Enix and Tecmo Koei both teamed up for this project, and they made the game look hella better than what you would expect it. The game looks polished. Each character looks beautifully unique and each model seems really good and that's what I really did like about the city of games they really did make these like put their heart and soul into the game now I'm talking about all of this but I'm not actually talking about what the bread and butter of the game is which is combat and this game is very strategic like you can't go in there mashing X and mashing square and thinking you're going to win no you need to think out every move and you need to be two steps ahead of your opponent this can be both either a bad thing or a good thing for certain players because it allows you to actually sit there and think, oh, I can't just go at this person, I need to figure out I'll use a bravery attack combo and combo into an HP attack or I'll use the HP attack combo into a bravery opponent and let my other opponent go in. Also, you gotta really do focus on the summon cores because they can make or break you in the game, which is something I'll be talking about in the next section, which is the bad. Um, but yeah. You gotta be 10 steps ahead of them. And I'll admit, even with the 3v3, which again is not gonna be the only mode, they're working on a 1v1 mode. Um, 3v3 is known for its hectic nature, which is something I generally didn't enjoy. So you gotta keep your head up and you gotta keep your momentum going. So don't think this moment this game is ever gonna give you a moment to sit down and relax. It will not. It is a very fast paced game that will keep you on your toes the whole time. So yeah, that's pretty much the good I have to say about it. It's an amazing game from that standpoint, and that's what I like about it. The bad. Now for me, I can only name a few problems. One is the summoning mechanic is being extremely broken. While it doesn't guarantee a win, it is an extreme annoyance when, you, I mean, when you're fighting someone and they make a summon. I'll admit, even on being on the same side, 
these characters, I mean, the Sony give unfair adapt to certain players. Even being on the receiving end of it was more of a hassle than it was an actual battle, because generally, we had to make sure, oh, our summons were staying intact, we had to make sure we weren't getting hit when we were trying to summon, and generally, it was just felt more of an amusement. Also, another really big problem is, what the hell is up with that camera? The camera was all over the place, and it was really, really bad. Like, You'll be, at one point, the camera will go off screen to where the fight is going on, and you're just sitting there like, why the hell is the camera going off? Now, of course, I don't have any footage of it, because when I was doing this, I eventually, when I was recording footage for the game, I eventually I got better with the camera and the skills of the game. But yeah, also, the lock-on mechanic is very much garbage. I'm going to just say that out loud. Despite the game having a lot of great things going for it, the lock-on mechanic and the camera are fucking awful. And I know I just used a bunch of language, but again, you guys know me, I curse, I don't care. But the camera was all over the place, and it's essentially really bad. Also, this is just a problem with the beta, not with the actual game, because I haven't actually gotten my hold on it. But, finding a match in the beta was like finding the release date for Kingdom Hearts 2. This took was a long ass wait, and you were sitting there just like messing around in the lobby, but at the same time, you're gonna get bored. Like, even I'll admit, there could be like a little training thing where you're just fighting the like crystallized versions of what should be your opponent. And then quickly as they come in, then the um, crystallized versions become actual real life opponents, and you can't uh, touch them. That's what I have as an opponent, kind of like how Taken had the training mode for, spe for when you're waiting in online matches. That's just my thoughts, and yeah, that, that's pretty much the bad of the game. There's not a lot to really say on it because, again, the game isn't complete garbage. Now, I'm adding this part in the review because, again, a lot of people who played the Oda Dissidia games were, well, disappointed. I want to talk about my disappointments with the game. Now, most of my disappointments come from, it's not the same. Like, that's generally all I can really say and why I'm disappointed. The city is much more complicated and a lot harder to get used to. Again, with this weird controls and lock-on mechanics that don't make no goddamn sense, it makes veterans like me who are used to the easy PSP controls feel as though this is a natural progression, but at the same time, it's not really all that great of a progression. A lot of controls such as being able to lock on just don't feel right, and even everything from jumping to jump button feeling different, to not even being able to ride on like springs of fucking energy, or plasma, or whatever that shit was in the city of um, Dora Dessie when the city of, generally just felt weird. Also, the 3v3 really doesn't compare to what the 1v1 high action that the PSP version has it really does. Yes, there's a lot more people on the screen. Yes, this is a multiplayer game now, but at the same time, we're used to this 1v1 combat, which I know they're bringing into the game, but I don't feel like we're going to get the same experience we got. With the PSP version, there was like some type of anticipation and generally like, you know, What's my opponent going to do? Whether it was playing with the CPU, or some lucky asshole with a link cable, or even just fighting against the people you somehow connected to the complicated PSP online don't, don't don't waste your time coming back now. But, yeah. Do I feel this game is terrible? Far from it. I mean, I've only got to play the beta and I've enjoyed much of it. I've enjoyed the story bits and pieces that we're getting, and I've enjoyed the actual gameplay of it. I enjoy that we're getting different modes of the core battle, and I feel like we're gonna get some type of capture the flag. I think it's core battle. Maybe, maybe we'll get an elimination game to in a couple of other online modes, but again, it just doesn't feel the same. And this is a great game that I feel like everyone should give a try, and I don't mind supporting it, but again, it doesn't feel the same. For, for new players, it's gonna be a really cool experience. For old players, it's gonna be a very disappointing experience because we're gonna be sitting in the back of our heads. We played the classics, but overall I enjoyed the game, and I enjoyed the beta. When will the release be? I believe January 30th, and, that, and believe it or not, I have a review up in February, because I actually went to them and enjoyed the game's story, and gameplay, and final product thing. But did the city of, was the city of beta trash? Not really, it was pretty fun. And uh, if you guys liked this video, please, hit me up with a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to go and follow me on Twitter for updates. Follow me on Twitch for weekly I mean for weekly streams. 
not just that, but also, if you want to, go and support me on Patreon. It will help me get improve and get better, and afford better equipment, and pretty much shows that you can help support a small YouTuber out, because YouTube sure as hell ain't doing that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep rolling with your bro, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.